Catherine of Aragon is best remembered in history for being the first wife of Henry VIII, the first of six. Her split from the king had a great toll on her and her daughter Mary, and what happened to her is considered unfair. She was shunned by the king, and was left to live out the last of her days being banished from court, whilst Henry was married to Anne Boleyn. She died at Kimbolton Hall, and died a painful death, but distastefully, the king and his new queen celebrated her passing. So join us today as we look at the painful death of Catherine of Aragon, Henry VIII's first queen. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Catherine of Aragon first came to England to marry the eldest son of Henry VII. She married Arthur Tudor at St Paul's Cathedral on the 14th of November 1501. Following the marriage, she and the heir apparent Arthur went to Ludlow Castle to preside over the Council of Wales and the Marches, but within a few months, both became ill and Catherine recovered. Arthur did not, which left the young Catherine a widow. To avoid returning the dowry payment, Henry VII then decided to marry Catherine to his other son Henry, the future King Henry VIII. Catherine's second wedding took place on the 11th of June 1509, and her husband had just come onto the throne. The pair were married in a private ceremony, but together the pair were anointed and crowned by the Archbishop of Canterbury at Westminster Abbey. As a queen, she was involved in important matters, and whilst the king was away, she was even involved in fighting against the Scots and commanding the English army. Henry, when he heard of her victory at the Battle of Flodden Field, was amazed and very happy, but as she got older, Catherine became more firm in her religious devotions. She went with Henry to the Field of the Cloth of Gold pageant in France, but in 1525, Henry VIII became besotted with a lady-in-waiting to his wife. Anne Boleyn captured Henry's attention, and he began to pursue her. Anne would not become the king's mistress like her sister had, and Catherine by this time was no longer able to have children. Henry tried desperately to get an annulment and a divorce from Catherine, so he could pursue a marriage to Anne Boleyn, who would only take to the king's bed if she was married to Henry. He requested that Catherine should retire to a nunnery, but she responded with, God never called me to a nunnery. I am the king's true and legitimate wife. Henry then tried everything within his power to get what he wanted, the solution he wanted from the king's great matter. Cardinal Wolsey could not secure from the Pope an annulment, and because of this he lost favour. The Pope was never going to grant the divorce to the English king. Henry ordered Wolsey's arrest, and Thomas Cranmer convinced the king to consult with scholars on the matter. The scholars ruled that the king should not have to answer to anyone but himself in matters involving his own kingdom. Henry then decided to annul his marriage, and he then married Anne Boleyn. It's claimed at the time that Anne was already pregnant, but Catherine had already been banished from court, and her old rooms had been given to Anne. She wrote to the Holy Roman Emperor in 1531, saying, My tribulations are so great, my life so disturbed by the plans daily invented to further the king's wicked intention, the surprises which the king gives me, with certain persons of his council, are so mortal, and my treatment is what God knows, that is enough to shorten ten lives, much more mine. Catherine then went to live at the Moor Castle in 1531, and following this she moved to a number of different castles, before she was finally sent to Kimbolton Castle. While she was here she was confined to one room, and she only left the room to attend Mass. She was only allowed occasional visitors, and was restricted to who she could write to. Henry offered Catherine and Mary better living space if they acknowledged Anne Boleyn as a rightful queen, but because they refused to do this, this was not granted. The 50-year-old Catherine spent her final days alone. She did have a visit from her friend, Maria de Salinas, who stayed with her mistress's side. Eustace Chapuy came to visit her, and by the time in late 1535, she was very ill. Chapuy's found Catherine of Aragon sat up, and she had not eaten much or slept a great deal, and complained of a terrible pain in her stomach. The pair met, and Chapuy then visited her every afternoon for the next four days, and he found Catherine's health to be improving. She was now eating some food, but on the 6th of January 1536, things went very downhill. Catherine's condition deteriorated, and she knew herself that the end was near for her. Catherine then dictated one final letter to Henry VIII on her deathbed. It was said she wrote, My most dear lord, king and husband, the hour of my death now drawing on, the tender love I owe you, force of me, 
my case being such, to commend myself to you, and to put you in remembrance with a few words of the health and safeguard of your soul, which you ought to prefer before all worldly matters, and before the care and pampering of your body, for the which you have cast me into many calamities, and yourself into many troubles. For my part I pardon you everything, I wish devoutly pray God that he will pardon you also. For the rest I commend you unto our daughter Mary, beseeching you to be a good father unto her, as I have heretofore desired. I entreat you also, on behalf of my maids, to give them marriage portions, which is not much, they being but free. For all my other servants I solicit the wages due them, and a year more, lest they be unprovided for. Lastly I make this vow, that mine eyes desire you above all things, Catherine the Queen. The letter has been debated, but by this time Catherine was very ill and on death's door. On the 7th of January at around 2 o'clock, Catherine of Aragon passed away inside of Kimbolton Castle. Henry's court celebrated, and Henry was overjoyed by the news, and Anne Boleyn was now seen as the only Queen of England. It was said that the next day, Sunday, the King and Queen appeared in joyful yellow from top to toe, and Elizabeth was triumphantly paraded to the church. After dinner, Henry went down into the Great Hall, where the ladies of court were dancing, with his 16-month-old daughter in his arms, showing her off to one another. After several days of such paternal enthusiasm, he evidently decided that something more masculine was called for, and the tilt yard was soon busy with his favourite form of self-exhibition. There were rumours floating around court that Catherine was poisoned. Accusation even pointed towards a king and queen, but during the embalming process, it was found that Catherine had a black growth on her heart. This was linked to the poisoning plot, but modern-day science and medical knowledge would say that the discoloration of her heart was linked to cancer. It was said this is almost certain that she died of cancer, and that the embalmer found that all of the internal organs were as healthy and normal as possible, with the exception of the heart, which was quite black and hideous to look at. The embalmer allegedly cut her heart in half, and washed it in an attempt to cleanse the heart of its black appearance. There was also an alleged strange black body attached to it, linked to a secondary cancer growth. Catherine of Aragon was buried inside of Peterborough Cathedral, and the king did not attend the funeral, and banned Mary from attending. Catherine of Aragon was the first wife of six for Henry VIII, but she died from a rather short illness. Her death was met very distastefully by the king and his new wife, who actively celebrated her demise. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.